Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing right, you should be watching me in black and white right now. Although, when I tell you what the film is about, like you haven't already seen that from the thumbnail, the title and the description, you're going to guess what colours I've used. You just don't know which ones I've used where. But, today's film, using, if I cover up the name of that, that might be useful, might now. Using a Profusion and a Charlotte Dilbury palette. Darlings, I'm doing a makeup look based on the Pantone colours before 2021. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours I've placed where, how it looks, what I think of these two palettes, then my friend, as ever, you have the best suit in the house. Time for you to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. It is really, really weird lighting out there and you know I rely on natural lighting with just my LED strip behind the camera. <clears throat> so I'm hoping that um, the lighting's not going to be too weird in this film. Right, I will have mentioned in the intro, I'm sure, that um, this is going to be based on the Pantone colour of 2021. Now, for those of you who don't know, I used to work <coughs> in a print company for a number of years, way back when. Um, and Pantone release um, these these books they're like long strips one on coated paper one on uncoated paper each color has a specific code and companies when they're choosing their logo to produce a color you can either use four color process which is cyan which is a, a brilliant bright blue uh, yellow magenta which is a hot pink and black and those four colours together through a four colour process pass will produce pretty much any colour but <clears throat> a lot of companies want their logo to be exactly the right shade which can be difficult to do on a four colour process so they choose a specific shade from a Pantone book when they're having their logos designed and you then, when you're printing something for them with their logo on, you do the four colour process first, then you wash it all down and get it set up to run this specific shade. And in the print world, whatever the Pantone code is, you then look it up in your huge book <clears throat> and it tells you specifically how much of each colour you need to add like really really precise so that their colour is always right for their logo and Pantone every year say this is going to be the colour for this year to be honest I'm not quite sure how they choose it but for 2021 they've chosen two colours um, I'll put them up here <clears throat> they've chosen Illuminating which is a rather nice sort of buttercuppy 
slightly darker than pastel lemony yellow <clears throat> but not really citrusy enough for me to class it as a lemon it is more of a buttercup and ultimate grey bizarrely that was the colour of my uniform when I was at inference and junior school in the summer it was yellow and white and in the winter it was grey and white so I'm, I'm getting flashbacks right now but these are the two colours that Pantone have decided for this year. I'm guessing the thought behind it is we've had a pretty shit year, so we're all feeling a bit grey. But 2021 is going to be better, so let's have something bright and cheerful like the yellow. Either way, I have two new palettes that I'm going to use to create a look based on the Pantone colours of the year. I've got the Pro Fusion Yellow Fusion palette, which is exactly what it says on the tin. And then I picked up this Rock Chick palette from Charlotte Tilbury, because I wanted to find out what her formula was like. And someone was selling this on Depop for a very sensible price. So I thought I'd grab it. So, that's the plan for today's film. Um, this is still a teaching channel, so I will be going at a speed that beginners can keep up with. That's partly because of my chronic pain. I also zoom in so it's just my eyes on screen. I do this for a couple of reasons. One you're less likely to see my painful winces uh, <clears throat> if, if it's just my eyes on screen but also if you're watching me on a phone screen there's nothing else to distract you you can just see my eyes you can really see what's happening so if your eyesight's not what it used to be you should still be able to see what's happening This does sometimes mean that if I'm looking down to clean a brush or add more pigment or change brushes or whatever, you get a rather lovely shot of my widow's peak hairline. You're welcome. Um, but that's just a small, a small thing to put up with in order to be able to see what's happening properly. My mouth this morning is drier than Gandhi's flip flop. Honestly heading towards Methuselah level of dryness. <laughs> Anyhow, um, a lot of people with deep set eyes are told or believe mistakenly that they have hooded lids. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute or two. It's going to be just my eyes on screen again. And it will talk you through the two different types of eye and the workaround for the best way to apply shadow depending on which type you have because I see a lot of people including the bigger beauty gurus say oh you know I've got hooded lids and I look at it and I think no you've got deep set eyes and the problem is if you follow a tutorial for hooded lids when you've actually got deep set eyes you're not going to get the best finish initially when your eye look is first done and you're not going to get the best longevity out of it so <clears throat> hopefully my tips and tricks will help you with both of those so the clip is coming up right now and I'll be here at the other end of it to apply some coloured pigment to my eyelids Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's 
it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with this big fluffy blending brush from e.l.f. It is actually a round brush, not an oval brush, but it got a little bit squished in um, in the post. It is meant to be a round brush. Uh, but basically I just wanted something really, really fluffy. Um, another option that I could have gone for is this unbranded, no idea what it is, but it's got a really huge head on it. Um, or my Luxy 205's got quite a large, but they both need cleaning, so. Basically, whatever size the head of the brush, that's how far it's going to blend out. Now, I'm going to start off with the Viennese Waltz blending, 
which is natural turns towards the nose, a bit of a fleckle when we get there, and reverse turn to come back out again. The reason I prefer this as opposed to just the windscreen wiper is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. It's even worse this side because it got pulled around as a kid. Can you see these super deep creases I've got here? This lid moves even more. But I know teenagers that have always been slim that have this issue. And if you just rely on the windscreen wiper, that's when you get your lid folding over and you get those telltale stripes, you know, tiger stripes, barcoding. By doing the Viennese waltz, you're very gently moving the skin around in both directions so that you are not, hopefully, getting any stripes, but you're also not doing any additional damage to your lids. Right, I'm going to start off with the shade Epic. Now I've not used this particular palette before. This is brand new. Brand, 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 brand new. Um, I have used a Pry Fusion palette before. Um, so I'm hoping this is as good as that one was. Now I always start on the outside edge because if it does deposit too much pigment much easier to sort it out when your nose isn't in the way and as always I'm holding it right at the end of the brush to put as little pressure on as possible if your brush handles long enough you can brace it against the palm of your hand to give you a bit more stability at this end okay and I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow so How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't been a good one, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, then darling, I hope it's as fabulous as you are. Okay, this is coming on so nicely. Because this is quite a light shade and I was really expecting to have to work to get that depth of colour. Uh, but yeah, this is making me very happy right now. I'm going to try this year to concentrate more on palettes that I already have in my collection unless there are specific things that come up that I really really want I mean obviously I've got um, a couple of companies that I do want to try this year but uh, I have done that film of brands that I want to try this year I wanted to look at that but also if I see any really interesting indie brands you know I'm going to grab something from them if I can because I love finding new indie brands but I'm going to try as much as possible to concentrate on the palettes that I already have this year now I know that's probably not going to help me in terms of growing my channel you know increasing numbers increasing watch time and everything because people want to see new stuff however I'm not a big beauty guru, I don't get stuff in PR, so I just can't afford to keep buying the new stuff. And uh, I'm pretty sure that quite a lot of you have still got some of these palettes. And it's just a way of just reminding you how good certain palettes can be, you know? Do I want to increase the yellow or do I want to go into the grey? No, I think I'm going to go into the grey next. I'm going to clean my brush off on a clean washcloth. I don't like using um, colour switches anymore. I used to. But they are far too harsh on the bristles of your brushes. Particularly natural haired ones. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is a synthetic, obviously, but 
I do have natural hair brushes and colour switches just kill them. Right, so I'm going to go into shade... Oh, she's just numbered them, one, two, three and four. Okay, that's helpful. So I'm going to go into shade two, which is the lighter of the two mattes. And then I'll change brushes and go in with four. Now, as I said, I have never used Charlotte Tilbury before. I've used her lippies and I like them. I've got a blush of hers and I like it. Eyeshadow wise, I genuinely have no idea what to expect. So I've tapped back off into the pan, as you can see. And uh, I'm going to try this just sort of just a fraction lower down, and uh, let's just see how this builds up. Obviously, I tapped a lot off because I wasn't sure how much pigment was going to, or how pigmented it was going to be. Let's go and pick some more of that pigment up. I was going to have um collab going up today but unfortunately the person that I'm collabing with is having real issues with YouTube so I'm having that's why I'm having to film this on a day when I normally wouldn't because of the, the lighting issues normally I wouldn't film on a day like this but um, I need to get a film recorded and up so what I might do is I might record I've got my um, rocker box January has arrived um, so I might just do once I've done this I might just film that one that's really weird you see how it's sort of taken out some of the brightness of the yellow above there how weird. Mind you, there's a fair amount of fallout down here, so... This is quite a, a satin shade. I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting that amount of reflect from it. So yeah, it's, I know how frustrating it is when something like that happens that, you know, you're already yeah, trying to get your film loaded up and then YouTube goes, <laughs> nah, or your internet has a day when it's playing around. So that film will still be going up as soon as... As soon as their internet's or their YouTube issues fixed. Which hopefully will be soon. Because I like collabs, they're fun. Now obviously where this is a satin is I mean, obviously you can blend satins out because I've done it myself. I've I've blended shimmers out before now, but this is not the effect I was planning on. Oh well, that's part of the fun of makeup, isn't it? It's like when you learn to cook. Anyone can cook when it goes well. It's when something goes wrong you find out how good a cook you are. It's like Christmas Day, my brother-in-law, bless him. I mean, obviously we weren't going to go up there because of all the Covid stuff, but my leg was, my legs were really bad with my cellulitis. And uh, Chris was really worried and he was like, we need someone to look at it. And I'm like, I am not going up the hospital. I said, they've got enough on their plate with Covid and everything. And of course the doctors wouldn't be open for a few days. So I said, look, let's compromise, let's go up and see mum. We need to drop her presents off anyway. And um, 
she can have a look at it and just see what she thinks, basically. And we got there, and bless him, brother-in-law's having a an issue in the kitchen because the uh, the stuffing wasn't going well. So I showed him how to sort that out, which calmed him down instantly, which is always nice to see. But I mean, he's only been doing roasts for a while. You know, I'd, I've been cooking since I was 13, when my mum just gave up. So I've got, you know, 33 plus years of experience of doing roasts and things. But yay. I know I get onto that. Oh yeah, things not going well on makeup. Right, uh, I'm changing to a <clears throat> slightly smaller brush. And I'm going to go into number four, which I'm hoping is going to be a matte. Otherwise, I'm not going to be very happy. I'm just going to concentrate this initially on that outer edge there. Yeah, it is a matte. That's good. And drag that across. Do my usual flick up at the edge there to make it look like we're getting a wing happening. I'm pretty much covering up that satin because it's not the effect that I wanted today. Then I'm going to grab my big floofy brush again and just really fluff that out and really soften it. There we go, that's looking better. But yeah, what I might do is, um, when I've finished filming this, I might film my Fusion unboxing because I've got my December one as well because that arrived literally about a week before my January one did so I might unbox those two because that would be a shorter film which means it will be quicker to edit, quicker to export and upload so that you still get a film today. I do struggle with this eye because that super deep creasing there resists even the Viennese walls. But what I end up doing is um, breaking one of my own rules when I put whatever colour is going to go on the lid. I um, gently stretch the lid out a little bit. I've got to be honest, I'm not impressed with this Charlotte Tilbury. Not impressed at all. Could just be that I'm, I've been put off by the fact that that's effectively then two satins, a shimmer and just the one matte in here. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't mind, I can use shimmers and stuff. But when you've got in mind the look that you wanted, <clears throat> and all of a sudden, it becomes something very different to what you had planned. I'm just going to grab my 
pad with my syllable twirl. Just tidy up that outside edge there. Yes, I could use tape. However, if the tape is sticky enough to stop pigment from going underneath the edge of it, then it's going to pull on the skin as you take it off, which kind of defeats the object really. And because I do my base afterwards anyway, <coughs> I prefer to do it like this. Okay. Well, I think I managed to rescue that back from the brink. The brink of disaster, darling. Right. Now what I need to do is decide what I'm going to put on the lid. I have to admit, one of these colours in this Profusion palette is calling me. It's this one, Gnarly. But is it a shimmer or is it a glitter? Oh, giddy goody gumdrops, it's a shimmer. Look at that. Turned into my nephew then. Goody goody gumdrops. Let's grab a brush and as always never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. I'm going to use this brush to load the pigment up and then I will spray it just with this old setting spray. Um, you can use any, whoa this is soft when you put a brush in it, it's almost like a um, like a super shock shadow if you're used to that formula because I barely put my brush in there and I've just made a huge great dink in it right. See that? Um, this might work, turn out to be one that applies better without being moistened But, however, I will do my usual. I always wet the brush afterwards. It helps to prevent some fallout. And it can also, if it's going to be one of the ones that applies better using your finger, then wetting it will give you the same effect or similar. Right, this ferrule is now wet. So I'm going to stick it in my knuckle and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds the bristles. And you're going to have a very expensive stick. Okay, let's apply this. You can use any liquid you want. Yeah, this is looking more like a super shock. I think this can be better without being wet. Let's dry the brush off. First time I use a, a a new pigment like this, I don't put a glitter glue down or do a cut crease or anything because I want to see exactly how opaque the shadow is because some of them can just be topper shades and it can be difficult to work that out if you've then got glitter glue making it look significantly brighter but I actually really quite like that hmm. but as I was saying with this eye I do break my own rule so 
I will show you what I do to get round the fact that I've got those super deep creases because if I don't do this what happens is the pigment builds up in the crease and then throughout the day flakes down into my eye and down my face and it's both painful and looks a bit naff but the way that I do it, it causing as little additional damage as possible I only stretch the lid out far enough to straighten the creases I don't pull it out to my ear roll I then apply the pigment as quickly and as smoothly as I can you can see even though I've stretched the lid it still moves and then once I'm done very gently put the lid back don't just let it ping back this is definitely a cream to powder formula on this particular shade I'm literally pushing it around the pan and then um, I'll just apply to the rest of the lid as normal you can see this lid moves an awful lot more than this one did but that's the problem when you get your eyes pulled around and this was when I was five six years old so you might think you're getting away with it but trust me it'll catch up here I like that. <clears throat> Look at the mess of that shadow though. <laughs> right, my lovely ones, I am going to pause you now while I go and pop some base products on. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, I'm going to have a bit of a wait before I get to talk to you again. But for you pop it, it's going to be absolutely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hello my babies. I am back. As you can see, I've done my usual soap brows. And I decided to go in with shade Safari. Which is a really nice mustardy yellow from the Profusion palette I must admit I'm really getting into the soap brow thing but then I think that's probably quite obvious right now Right, beautifuls, I'm going to grab this flat top brush and go into the one mat in here, number four. Honestly. And I'm going to run that along the lower lash line. And then I've got this <coughs> chunky brush from e.l.f. What do they call it? An eyeshadow C. Guessing because it's the shape of a... Turn it that way. A C. Right. I'm going to go into... I think... Busy B. Which is this one just here? I'm 
I'm going to use this just to buff along that lower lash line just to add a real warmth of brightness under there because obviously the top is quite smoky I just wanted to add a nice pop of yellow underneath You know what? I've got to be honest. I think I'm preferring this Profusion palette to the Aha Honey palette. That uh, colour pop brought out. Because of course they've got bloody pressed glitter in theirs, haven't they? I must admit, I was torn between using this and using my Urban Decay Honey, Naked Honey, but as this palette's new to me, I thought I'd give it a bit of a run out. I really like that. Mm. Now, yeah. highlight. Bloody good question. I think I'll grab my Spectrum Zodiac Sunray Highlighter. This looks like that. Because it's white with a shift of gold. And I'll run a little bit of that up under the tail of my brows. I'm just glad my brows recovered from the 90s over plucking disaster, darling. And again on the inner corner, and just pull it under the tear duct and blend it in under the eye there. You don't have to pull it under the lower lash line like that. But I just think it finishes the eye look off nicely. Right, beautiful ones. I'm going to pause you for one last time. I am going to apply some more of that highlight to various areas of my face. Probably end up looking a little bit like the Tin Man, but then don't I always. Uh, mascara, lippy, uh, do something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look again for you. Instant. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Just killed another one of these. I swear these I go through so many of these in a year. Honestly. Uh mascara is the Clarins Supra volume that my friend Heather gave me. The lippy is also one that Heather gave me. It's a Charlotte Tilbury Stoned Rose. And of course the setting spray is my Gerard Slay of Day. I'm currently working my way through the Orange Dreamsicle one. Uh, I do have a code with Gerard. It's listed in the description. I uh, don't know how much longer I'll have it for because um, I don't push my code like some people do. And as a virtue of that, I know that they're going to be looking in January and February time to rejig who's got a code and who hasn't. So uh, if you want to use it, make the most of it while it's still there, because there's no guarantee I'll still have it. Um, but this is my finished look using these two palettes. And inspired by the colours of 2021 as per Pantone. What do you think? You like? You not like? I actually quite like it. I'm surprised. I've not done grey and yellow together before, but I quite like it. I normally team grey with cooler shades, so I've teamed it with blues, I've teamed it with greens, silvers, 
I'm never with you alone before. That I can remember anyway. So, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check. You are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. But they're leaving my films in your recommended. So it's not obvious you've been deleted. Also double check your notification status because although they don't seem to be sending emails at the moment, mine had all got knocked back to personalised so I had to go through and change it for all of the channels that I've got them set for. Deep joy. Uh, once you've done that, a bit of a thumbs up would be nice, all helps with the algorithm. A bit of a comment, what do you think? Did you know that was the Pantone colours for this year? Are you tempted to, to try combining yellow and grey having done this? What do you reckon? Hmm? Let me know, I'll be really interested to hear. Uh, if you've tripped over me some other way though, and you are brand new here, hi, hello, welcome. Can I get my head any further over to one side? Good lord. And where do you think my earring weighs half a ton? I hope you've enjoyed it here. This is this is kind of what you're going to get with me. Uh, applying makeup. Some days better than others. But usually blethering on at you about anything and nothing. All at the same time. But I'm told I have a soothing voice. So it kind of makes up for it. That sounds like your kind of thing and you'd like to see some more, it's super easy to join the 4F family. You hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube are going to pull their finger out and start sending them again. In the meantime, uh, as well as a rather large back side, I have a rather large back catalogue of films you can watch. I've got all kinds of different things. Um, collabs, makeup reviews, tutorials, tags, challenges. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So I'm sure you'll find something that'll interest you. So if you're looking for some me time, as I have said now, for... What feels like a time immemorial, darling. Grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy and indulge. Because what better way to have me time than just chilling out, listening to me blether while applying coloured pigments to my face. <laughs> really selling it to you, aren't I? Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.